Hey guys, you're listening to the Time of Football podcast, and this is our analysis of the AFC North prior to the 2018 NFL season. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Time of Football podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. I am your wonderful and fabulous host of this podcast. Disclaimer, before we get into anything, um, if throughout, at any point today, you hear this sound, I don't know what it is, but my uh, table started making making this squeaking sound today. Um, so if at any point throughout this podcast you hear that sound, just know that it's the table and it's not, um, you know, flatulence. But we're talking about every division in football, and we wrapped up the NFC, and we got into the AFC last week. We talked about the AFC South, or we did not talk about the AFC South last week. That was two weeks ago. Last week, I tried to get a podcast out talking about the AFC North, but... I was caught up in a lot of work. Um, So for you guys that don't know, um, this whole podcast show I do, this is actually um, a side hustle. I make revenue from it, um, but it's not enough to um, do it full time. Um, Hopefully in the future, someday, that would be really, really awesome. Um, But it's not enough to, you know, support myself full time. I got other jobs I do and I do other uh, freelance projects on the side. I work with local colleges, local schools, um, and their athletic departments, um, trying to get my feet wet and the broadcasting career. So, uh, make, you know, revenue off of that. Um, have another stable, um, hourly job that I make or uh, make revenue off of. So, um, so I just got really caught up in a lot of work last week. So I apologize for that. I couldn't get a podcast out for you guys, but we're getting one out right now. Um, but let me catch you up on on okay so we on this podcast before we get into football analysis you know that we just talk about nonsense just because I it's my show I can talk about what I want we got enough studio time I feel like we've got enough time to talk yeah okay we're we're solid yep yeah, let's we're solid we're solid let's talk let's talk about work if you want to skip ahead to the football analysis um, what I've been starting to do is down underneath in the comment section I've been pinning my own comments where um, for all four teams um, in each division, I label what time um, in this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, I label where um, in the video you can start listening um, or hearing about this team, the analysis for this team. So if you want to skip ahead to your favorite team, I totally understand. I understand you don't want to watch you know, a 30 to 45 minute video. You can go ahead, skip around. Um, just go to the comment section. Um, if you're on iTunes, you're kind of screwed. You know, you're gonna have to re- listen to my rant. Um, but yo, I was working right, and I'm not gonna mention where exactly I work because it just doesn't matter. I'm um, not that I'm ashamed of it or anything. It just doesn't matter. Um, but man, great environment I work in. Good benefits, great pay, um, just great coworkers. It, fantastic job. And, and it's a blessing of a job. It really is. Um, But it is customer service. And I'll I'll mention this. I work with phones. And um, there was one customer that I was working with, 70, 75-year-old man, just, you know, a lot of the older um, crowd doesn't really tend to handle technology that well, which is totally fine. I understand. Um, But I was trying to help him fix something with his phone. And I told him, okay, the only way to fix this is we got to erase your phone. And he said, okay, that's fine. Um... I walked him through on how to save all of his stuff so that he can get all of that back. I I showed him, yeah, all of your stuff is saved, so don't worry about it. He said, yeah, yeah, just go ahead. Erased everything on his phone. He forgot his credentials, his his account, login, and password to get all of his data back onto his phone. And that wasn't on us. That's on him. He's supposed to know his password. But he was upset about it. And after five minutes of being upset, trying to calm him down, he eventually said, I am a Vietnam vet, and I'm not afraid to go out to my car, get my gun, and blow your effing head off. He did this hand motion for you guys watching on YouTube. Blow your effing head off. 
um, but he said the actual word instead of effing. And at that point, when your life is your your life is being threatened over a phone, you can tell them to leave. And if they don't leave, you can call the cops. But I knew that he was just a 75 year old man. He was upset and, and he could be calmed down. So I just said, hey man, don't say that. Just, just, just let me go grab a manager. I understand you're upset. Just don't go threatening around people. And um, while I was going to go get a manager, I think he thought about it really, what he said. And um, later on, he apologized. Um, grabbed a manager. We calmed him down and everything was good. But um, yeah, he didn't get his data back. That's not my problem. But um, this is this is what's wrong with 2018. Okay, so I told I as immediately after he said that I walked to the back. I laughed. Okay, I I'm I'm not the kind of person that you know yells or gets upset or anything. It takes a lot to make me angry. Um, so for you guys, I talk a lot of trash on on my videos. I I really I really don't care. Honestly, I really don't. Um, it takes so much to make me angry. And anyways, I walked to the back. I was just laughing about it because like, did this really just happen? And I told a couple of my coworkers about it. And this is what's wrong with 2018. When I told them about it, they said, well, one of them said, do you think it's because he's white and you're brown? Hey, What? Where at any point did did that man threaten my life because he mentioned race? He mentioned he 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 did not mention race at all. But that's just the mindset of some people nowadays. They say, okay, well this guy's white and I'm brown. Now me, the victim, I'm sticking up for this guy. I'm sticking up for him. I'm saying I don't think it was racial profiling. Now granted, he shouldn't have threatened me. That sucks, but I don't think at any point he was thinking in his head, yeah, it's because you're brown. I think he was really more upset that he can't get his data back. Um, But that's just the mentality of some people, and I'm not going to get into any racial profiling, controversial topic, each scenario, each each situation that happens that you hear about in the news, that there, that's totally like... It, it, some some situ- situations are racial profiling. Some aren't. Like it all depends. Okay, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not going to start anything. Okay, okay. I'm not. Just just. I don't want to get into polit- political stuff. But um, what I will mention is why do we have that mindset nowadays where everything has to be about race? And I I know that some things out there in the world are like that. But again, like I said, I'm not going to get into that. Um, there was even one time in, in Time to Football's video, um, the most watched video on our YouTube channel, it's um, the top five NFL combine performances in NFL history. And I talked about Chris Johnson, and this is before John Ross got a 4.22 40-yard dash. Chris Johnson came in on, on our list because we made that video prior to John Ross, and he set the record for 4.24. Well, I mentioned Chris Johnson, and for you old school football fans that know about Gus Johnson, meaning you fans that aren't 14 years old and talk trash on the internet, you know about Gus Johnson. You know that he's an NFL commentator and you know about the line in 2009, which Chris Johnson ran for a 50 plus yard touchdown. And Gus Johnson said on commentary, look out, he's got that getting away from the cops speed. Eh? little racist Eh, I don't know but Gus Johnson is black Chris Johnson is black is it okay for him to say it then was he inferring that it's about race personally he didn't mention anything about race it's everyone else in their minds that say well it has to be about race you're inferring that it's about race because Black people run away from the cops, apparently. Not true. It could be white people. It could be anyone. But that's just our mindsets nowadays. And in that video, that NFL Combine video, I mentioned that line. I said, Chris Johnson ran a 4.24. He's got that getting away from the cop speed. And obviously, you can tell what happened next. I got a flood of comments saying, 
racist, call me the N-word, which is kind of, I don't know, I feel like that's an oxymoron to call me a racist, and but also call me the N-word and, you know, stick up for racism. But anyways, um, but a lot of people brought race into it, and thankfully, the Time of Football Faithful, you guys that are subscribed to us, um, you guys back me up. You said, why is this racist? He just said one line. He said nothing about him being black. You guys just inferred it. Already, we're, what is this, like 10 minutes into the podcast, 11 minutes, and already controversial. But that, that that's, I don't know, that's just the mentality nowadays where we just got to get out of that, I feel like. Again, okay, again, I'm not talking about like all the bad stuff and terrible stuff you hear about police brutality in the news okay i'm not going to get into that all right i'm like some of that stuff is is terrible okay and there's no explanation for why someone would murder someone when there's no reason okay i'm we're done we're done okay we're done but we're not done because we're going to talk about the afc north now so Thank you so much for tuning in again to a wonderful edition of the Time of Football podcast. Why don't we start with the Cleveland Browns, the new kids on the block, a new look for this team. We've got Tyrod Taylor at quarterback, along with Baker Mayfield that was drafted as well. Um, And they got rid of some quarterbacks as well. Cody Kessler is gone. Deshaun Kaiser is gone. Um, so they're, it's looking like Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter. Baker is backing up, still learning behind him. Um, but he was drafted number one overall to be that franchise quarterback, to be the face of this franchise for years to come. Um, this team made one of the more bigger, um, I guess, sexier splashes in free agency with all the moves that they made. They brought in Jarvis Landry. Um, Josh Gordon got reinstated, uh, bringing in Tyrod Taylor, like we mentioned, drafting Baker Mayfield, um, drafting Denzel Ward, which, if okay, there's so much to talk about with the Cleveland Browns. Let's start with the NFL draft. Let's just start with the first two picks that they had. First overall and number four overall. Drafted Baker Mayfield number one overall. Listen, I'm not arguing the point that if you love Baker Mayfield, if you believe that he's the best quarterback in the NFL draft, totally fine. Okay? If you want him to be your guy, then take him. He's your guy. I'm all I'm all for that. But my thing is when everybody else doesn't see them as their guy, then why would you having the first overall pick take him number 1 overall? Do you think by any point that or any chance that if the Browns took the best player in the draft, Saquon Barkley, took him first overall, who do the Giants have? Um, or the Giants at number two, okay, they drafted Saquon Barkley, but if Cleveland drafted Saquon Barkley number one overall, then the Giants said, okay, well, let's get Bradley Chubb. And if they don't even get Bradley Chubb, Sam Darnold is on the board, get Sam Darnold. But see, if they get one of those one of those two players, then you got the Jets at number three. And if Sam Darnold isn't taken, well, the Jets are grabbing Sam Darnold. And if Sam Darnold is taken, well, the Jets in their draft board said that they prefer Josh Rosen over Baker Mayfield. Then you could have had Baker Mayfield at number at number four. So was it worth drafting Baker Baker Mayfield number one overall? In the end, I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. I think that it would have been amazing if you got Saquon number one overall, then were able to get Baker number four. But in the end, they did make up for it, I feel like, with the secondary help that they that they needed with Denzel Ward. Bringing in Denzel Ward at number four is is a good pick. Uh, he was one of the more the better defensive backs along with uh, maybe Derwin James was up there in the NFL draft. But they did miss miss out, I feel like, with, with Saquon Barkley. But they they made up for it, grabbing Nick Chubb later on, signing Carlos Hyde as well. So it's exciting to see. I know the bigger question on people's minds are, well, when are we going to see Baker Mayfield? He's a guy that we brought in as the face of the franchise. 
it seems like Tyrod Taylor is going to be the starter. Baker, I don't see him coming in unless Tyrod Taylor gets injured or um, he gets, I don't know, his performance just depletes to the point where they need a, a, a new face under center. Um, also, you know, later on at the end of the season, week 15, 16, 17, if they're out of playoff contention, why not give Baker Mayfield some snaps? Then they'll put in, uh, put him in. But um, it'll be exciting to see how the Cleveland Browns are going to turn out. Um, will they make the playoffs going into 2018? So it'll be tough. Um, for a team that was 0-16, it's it's a lot It has to happen to have a, a winning season. Because pretty much at this point, you'll need a winning season to get inside the playoffs because you're not going to win the division with Pittsburgh, with Baltimore, with even Cincinnati. Um, it'll be tough. But can they make a wild card? Oh, man, it, it's hard to say. Personally, I don't see them making the playoffs this year, but they're definitely making the right strides and getting to the playoffs maybe in 2019. So that wouldn't be out of the question in 2019. For this year, though, they might miss it. Um The Baltimore Ravens. So the sexiest move for them is they brought in Lamar Jackson at number 32 overall in the NFL draft. So is Lamar Jackson going to start over Joe Flacco? That is the question. Or is it? Should it even be a question? Is the question. I'm confusing a lot of you guys. But pretty much my opinion is I'm just going to set this straight. Joe Flacco is the starting quarterback for Baltimore. A lot of people want Lamar Jackson. And everybody's saying, oh, bye-bye, Joe Flacco. Your time is up. Put in Lamar Jackson. Put in the Heisman Trophy winner. Put him in because he can lead this franchise to an eventual Super Bowl victory. It's a lot of talk. But... Flacco, I don't think he's underperformed to the point where he is losing his job. The people that say they want to see Lamar Jackson as a starter, or let me backtrack. People that say Lamar Jackson is going to start are the people that want it to happen. Okay? This isn't a matter of what you want to happen. Because people say, well, I want Lamar Jackson to, to start over Joe Flacco, so that's what's going to happen. No, it's not. People get confused over what they want to see, over what is actually logically smart for the team. And what is smart for the Baltimore Ravens is to start Joe Flacco. Like I said, he he hasn't performed to the point where he has to lose his starting job. In 2018, I don't feel like Lamar Jackson, he's going to get snaps, but he's not going to start a game unless Joe Flacco were to get injured. At that point, I'm not calling Lamar Jackson a bust. At any point, he could be like Deshaun Watson, where he didn't start off as the starter, but an unfortunate injury to the quarterback forced him to come into the game, and that's where he took off, and that's where... If that were to happen, then in 2019, Joe Flacco could be traded somewhere else, could be released, and Lamar Jackson could be the face of the franchise. But for now, guys, listen. I know you want to see Lamar Jackson start because you love seeing those highlights on Instagram or YouTube where they play some random rap music in the background and it's showing him make some amazing plays, which those videos are are lit, which I'm totally with you on that. They're amazing hype videos, but bro, Joe Flacco is going to be the starter. RG3, nah, I won't go there. I was going to say RG3 has a better chance of starting than than Lamar Jackson. Eh, I think uh, RG3 was just more of like an insurance policy. Um, But what else is going on with the Baltimore Ravens? So, speaking of their quarterback and their offense, I really like this offense. I really like what they did at... um, number 25 in the NFL draft, drafting a tight end, uh, bringing in Hayden Hurst. Because I feel like that, yes, Ben Watson um, was productive and he seems like an ageless wonder, but they like Hayden Hurst. And I feel like that this guy, he could be the starter in Baltimore. So along with Hayden Hurst, the receiving core um, at wideout, they brought in John Brown and they brought in Michael Crabtree um, as new fresh faces to be partnered up with Joe Flacco and company. 
if they had someone like Des Bryant, a big body wide out, out wide, and they were able to get Michael Crabtree alongside with them, which I don't think, I think at that point it would have been one or the other. Um, then at that point, that would have been amazing for, for the offense. Um, but bringing in Michael Crabtree, I think is, is a good compliment and is a good substitute as well. I don't think they're really hurting as well in that situation at wide receiver. Um, their defense, I have no problem with. Their defense, it, it, it's a top 10 defense. Um, or I believe they were ranked 12th last year, but has the potential to be in the top 10. Um, CJ Mosley is is a tackle machine. It seems like every single year you vote him for the Pro Bowl. And I have no questions that this this defense, along with their secondary with Eric Weddle uh, being in the top 10 in interceptions, along with Tony Jefferson, who last year maybe didn't make too much of a significant impact. Um, but you have those two guys, Eric Weddle and Tony Jefferson at safety. I think they'll be fine defensively. Offensively, they've had added, added some new additions to the team. So we'll see where they rank um, in 2018. We're going to go ahead and continue with this AFC North podcast. But first, I wanted to talk about something very dear to my heart. And if you guys have been listening to this podcast, you know what that is. But for you first timers, I want to tell you something amazing. And that something amazing is... Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator. So think of it like um, every single week, not every single week, every single month, you pledge however uh, much you want. It could be as little as a dollar a month. You pledge that towards your favorite content creator and they use that revenue to help bolster up their own projects, their own brand, their own content so that they can provide entertainment for you. So us at Time to Football, we have a Patreon page and we have projects listed where um, if you wanted to sponsor or pledge to us, you can kind of read up on what your revenue goes towards because I know some people are kind of iffy when it comes to giving money. I totally understand that. Um, but for us, you can kind of read where your projects go towards. Um, and there's some pretty cool, neat projects that we've got planned for the future. So um, we actually have perks as well. So if you guys give a dollar a month, I know it's not much, but you get a time football wristband. But if you give just $5 a month, you get a free time to football t-shirt. A t-shirt for $5. It's a good deal to me. Um, but if everyone listening to this podcast or watching this podcast on YouTube gave just $1 a month, we would have enough revenue to boost or, or boost up time to football tremendously. Like tremendously. I kid you not. We would be in the thousands with revenue and we would um, be able to do some amazing things. And at that point, um, you can see all the projects that um, we're going to be boosting up. We're going to be, why am I saying that word a lot? Boost. I don't know. But all the projects that we've got planned that we've um set our hearts and set our passion towards in the future and with your help which we thank you even just for tuning in and watching this podcast and just interacting with us we love that as well um but you can see if you go to patreon.com slash time to football read up on all the projects that your money goes towards that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash time the number two football patreon.com slash time to football every little bit helps the afc north is an interesting division uh mainly because there was one team last year that was ranked dead last in terms of total yards for their offense ranked 32nd and believe it or not it was not the cleveland browns it was actually the third team that we're going to talk about and that's the cincinnati bengals so they were ranked 32nd overall in terms of their offense as far as yards per game. But let's just break that down. Why is that? Why would a team with playmakers that are so underrated like A.J. Green and Tyler Eifert, why would they be ranked 32nd? And it all starts within the trenches. And it starts with that offensive line. 
Now, Cincinnati knew that their offensive line was an issue, and so they addressed it in the NFL draft, also in free agency. Um, they traded for um, Cordy Glenn from Buffalo. They drafted P- Billy Price um, to be their new center um, because this team did go downhill ever since they let Andrew Whitworth go to Los Angeles. And they're looking to, to redo their line, re-solidify that line so that Andy Dalton and company can have protection. Um, Dalton at quarterback is actually... I say he's pretty underrated. I wouldn't say he's the best quarterback in the NFL, but he's not bad. Um, for a guy that might throw like 25 touchdowns and 12 interceptions a year, you know, that could be all you may need to go for a championship run. Obviously, they want him to break that ceiling and get somewhere around 30 to 35 touchdowns a year. But if you got a defense that is pretty solid in itself, what more can you ask for your quarterback? A lot of people were saying that maybe Adrian McCarron would be the the starting quarterback eventually and Andy Dalton would lose his job. Dalton hasn't performed to the point where he needs to give up his job to Adrian McCarron. Pretty much to sum it up, he, he's a pretty underrated quarterback, and I don't think that quarterback position is, is any, in, in any trouble at any point. If anything, I could see Dalton maybe having a breakout season and getting to that point where he could throw 30 to 35 touchdowns in 2018. Um, but the reason why this team just seems like they can't get over that one hump of either getting to the playoffs or winning their first game in the playoffs, a lot of attention is going to go to Marvin Lewis as their head coach. So seem like for the past seven years, eight years or so, Marvin Lewis has been on the hot seat because he's 0-7 in the playoffs. But this past season seemed like the most he had the most amount of pressure because he didn't even make the playoffs. So people were saying, okay, he's done. They got to bring in someone new. But um, the front office really loves Marvin Lewis and they really believe in the philosophy of, hey, he's doing something. He's shifting something in our team. Maybe after 13, 14, however many years he's been with Cincinnati, you would see that, okay, there has to be at some point, you have to win a playoff game. You have to move on. Cincinnati is very adamant in that Marvin Lewis can be their guy to get them that first playoff victory. This season, however, do I see him sticking around in 2019? You know, I I believe that 2017 was the most amount of pressure that he had. So in 2018, he's going to have even more pressure because he was given grace in coming back. So even if Marvin Lewis makes the playoffs and wins a playoff game, unless he goes all the way to the conference championship or the Super Bowl, I don't think he's going to be the head coach in Cincinnati in 2019. I think it's time for them to move on if it is to that point where they don't go that far. And I know that's a lot of pressure to put on him and on that team. But really, at this point, I think that the Bengals are one of those teams that are the dark horses that people are sleeping on that has the potential to make it to the playoffs. They could be a 10-6 and six team. They could be 11-5. and five. They could make the conference championship with teams like Jacksonville, um, New England, other teams that AFC, Kansas City, that could be contenders for that AFC championship run. Yeah, it's going to be tough to make it, but I feel like... This team is just very underrated. Um, And it goes back to the playmakers that I was talking about with Tyler Eifert, with A.J. Green. Andy Dalton is underrated. Joe Mixon at running back is very underrated. There's just – it's a team that people are sleeping on that I don't don't think that you should be sleeping on. Um, So all the pressure does lie in the hands of Marvin Lewis. Maybe in the players and helping Marvin Lewis get – over that hump and winning a playoff game. You ask any of the players and the coaches, they say they don't think about that. They don't think about the fact that he's 0-7 in the playoffs. They don't think about that they haven't won a playoff game in so long. All their their goal is, uh, their mission is to make it to the Super Bowl and that's all they care about. They don't care about the media hype, which is amazing and that's how it should be. Um, But I still think that subconsciously there is pressure uh, from from the front office and from Marvin Lewis and getting at least to the conference championship. Um, 
So yeah, to pretty much sum it up, I think that if Marvin Lewis doesn't make the conference championship um, or the Super Bowl, he's out. He's out, and they're going to have a new head coach in 2019. Um, defensively, I do like this team. Um, I think this team is pretty solid defensively. AFC North in, in general, defense is not not an issue. Um, last year for the Bengals, they were ranked 18th, but for as far as they drafted, as far as the free agents that they brought in, um, as far as the people that they let go, I feel like they have... It, it, it's just the floor, I feel like, for them to be at number 18 overall and they can only go up. Um just being within a tough division as far as the offense goes, it does get kind of tough and that's why they might be ranked 18th. But um, all eyes for me at least are on this offense and how can this offense catapult Marvin Lewis to a conference championship? Um, That's just stuff that we're going to have to see with the Cincinnati Bengals. So I'm telling you guys right now, don't sleep on the Bengals. They're one of the dark horses for me. Um, And the last team that we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. So here we go, Steelers. Here we go. Um, there's they seem to be good every single year. Their offense and their defense. It's like I said, they're good every single year. And this past year, they were number three overall as far as yards per game um, for their offense, and number five overall in defense. And this is a defense that lost Ryan Shay's year. Um, let's start with the defense first. So for a team that lost Ryan Shay's year. I projected them to really address that situation in the NFL draft. Um, Now, obviously, all all of our thoughts and prayers are out to Ryan Chazier. Um, Hopefully that he can get better and and he can have a miraculous comeback and he can play. Um, You know, obviously, he's not going to be playing this year, but next year and and in years after that, um, that's his goal. And we're all rooting for him. So hopefully he does make it back. You have to think about life after Ryan Chazier. And it's kind of sad to think about, but you have to address the linebacker situation. And they have already got good linebackers. I know that Bud Dupree is a pretty good linebacker and even goes down to the trenches in their defensive line. Cameron Hayward um, is a solid guy that seems like another one of those people that makes a Pro Bowl every single year. But I I predicted them to at least draft a linebacker in the first round, um, You know, drafting either um, Rashawn Evans or Harold Landry. Um, as an edge rusher, but they went ahead and went with um, Terrell Edmonds. But their linebacker is, is, I think that's a void that maybe they won't feel the effects of it immediately because they were ranked top five in defense last year. But you got to prepare for the future. And that's why I I was really hoping that they would draft um, a linebacker like Evans or Landry. But Edmonds is a really good player, and I know that the Pittsburgh organization, Mike Tomlin, I know exactly he's he knows what he's doing, and and this team is going to be in good hands. Um, Offensively, um, the biggest question mark for this team, I don't want to say question mark in the sense that he's not going to be good, but as far as where is the future with him, or where do you go in the future with him, and that's Le'Veon Bell turning down a five-year, $70 million deal for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was looking for a deal that was roughly around $15 million a year. He turned that down. And it's because he knows his worth. He knows that he's the best running back, arguably, in the NFL. Personally, I believe he is the best running back. Some will say Todd Gurley. Some say Zeke, David Johnson. I believe it's Le'Veon Bell. Um, So he knows his worth. Is he going to be around for the Pittsburgh Steelers after 2018? That we don't know. You know, a lot of people would say that, okay, well, this is a distraction. Him holding out of, of, of training camp and waiting for that new deal. He's not going to be that good. He hasn't been conditioning that well. And I, I don't believe that. I think, number one, naturally, he's talented. He's athletic and he's gifted. Um, number two, I think he's been training on his own. And number three, he's now going to be reporting to training camp well ahead of time and and he's going to have that conditioning going out through the, through the preseason um so he'll be present with the team now that he doesn't have the contract situation worked out necessarily with the Steelers but he knows what's happening with the contract situation so he's back he's going to be in full gear and I think Le'Veon Bell if anything it's a contract year so if he's not going to be around with the Steelers in 20 uh 2019 and moving forward he's going to be balling out so that he can prove himself um, 
And so that whatever team he lands with in 2019, or if he resigns with the Steelers, um, they know his worth. They know that they got to pay him really well um, going into the year after. Um, ben Roethlisberger, at one point, I do feel like Roethlisberger is going to have a down year. Not saying that he's not a good quarterback. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL right now. And I don't think that's going to be this year because he's just got so much talent around him. But just the comments that he's been making about um, when the Steelers drafted Mason Rudolph and Ben Roethlisberger, who's someone, who was someone that was iffy about playing in 2017 to begin with, was thinking about retirement. All of a sudden, when the Steelers draft Mason Rudolph to prepare for the future, he's like, well, I don't know why they did that because I'm not going to retire for another three to five years. Do I believe him? I don't know. I honestly don't. But um, it's just kind of funny how those comments came out as after they drafted Mason Rudolph and before when he was even con- contemplating playing just one year. Um, so is that down year coming for Ben Roethlisberger or will he play productively for the rest of his career I personally see him having a downfall later on in 2018 I don't think that's going to happen I think this team is just as talented and will continue to be just as talented going into 2018 as they were in 2017 they're not going to have a down year they're going to be one of the best teams in the NFL and I feel like they're going to win the AFC North just as they always do Um, so as far as the whole AFC North overall I don't think that the Cleveland Browns are going to win the division. I don't think that they're going to be better than any team in the AFC North. And that's sad to say, but I do see them coming in like around 5-11, 6-10, which is better. And that's making strides, um, which gives a lot of promise for Cleveland fans for years to come. Third, I've actually got... Man, this is a toss-up. It's a toss-up between... The Ravens and the Bengals. I know most people want to say the Bengals, but I'm big on them this year. I really am. Um, So I'm just going to go ahead and just say the Ravens. I see them coming in at number three. Ah, gosh, I don't know. That's hard. That's hard. Okay, I'm going to say for now, I'm going to say the Ravens, but it's subject to change because I really like both teams. I really like the Ravens and the the Bengals because I think both teams have the potential and, and could be... Um, sleepers that people are just um, not given a chance but for number two for now I'll say the Bengals because like I said they're very underrated and a lot of people are going to say that Marvin Lewis is out after this year more than likely probably but um, I think he's going to make that stride towards the playoffs Um, will he get in it's kind of iffy but um, he will definitely have a a very strong push in making the playoffs with an underrated offense like I said with those playmakers that you got to draft in fantasy football don't sleep on those Cincinnati Bengals Um, and number one obviously I've got the Pittsburgh Steelers winning the AFC North this team just year after year is just um, just dominant Um, granted they're not like a dynasty like the New England Patriots but if the New England Patriots weren't around the Pittsburgh Steelers would definitely be the dynasty Um, for this decade so thank you so much for tuning in to the AFC North podcast hopefully I didn't upset you guys from um, bashing on your team that's another thing I want to talk about like I don't I don't hate your team I really don't okay I've got no one to hate Uh, I'm a Falcons fan so I got no one like it doesn't matter who I hate in the AFC North I, I don't it has no relevance to me um I might hate the Saints a bit. Just a bit. Just a. It's just natural. Okay? It's natural. I, the Saints are just. It's it's a rivalry. Um, no, nah, Saints are a really good team. I'm, I'm. I don't get upset whenever. If the Saints beat the Falcons, I don't get upset at all. At all. Um, but thank you so much for tuning into this podcast. If you're listening to this on iTunes, remember that we do have a YouTube channel. You can go to youtube.com slash. Time to football. Just search Time to Football on YouTube and you will find us. Subscribe to that. You can get um, full podcast on there. You'll see video podcasts. So if you like me moving around my my hands a lot and, and just my facial expressions and I don't know if you just want to look at me, 
Let's just say that. You can go to YouTube, subscribe to this full podcast, but we also have other content that we put up on YouTube as well. Vice versa, if you're watching this on YouTube, just remember that we do have a podcast on iTunes. You can go to the podcast app on your phone, search for Time to Football. That's Time, the number two, football, all one word. Search for that on the podcast app and you will find us. Regardless, if you're on the podcast app, rate and review this podcast. I'm telling you guys, it helps us out a lot. You've been really good with uh, giving us good reviews, rating this podcast. Um, Yeah, I just want to thank you guys because you guys have been tuning in a lot um, on YouTube, even on on iTunes. You guys have been loving the series that we've been talking about, all the divisions in football. So I appreciate you guys tuning in every single week with the exception of last week because of that one situation that happened at work and I was busy and yeah. Um, but regardless, thank you for tuning in. Um, next, we're going to talk about the um, AFC East and I'm going to try to get more guests on here. Um, there's one guy I'm talking to, uh, a close friend of mine that um, is a, is actually a Dolphins fan. Um, so I've got a lot of Patriots friends, fans that are Uh, or friends that are fans of the Patriots. But I want to switch it up. I want to get someone with a little bit of perspective um, outside of just the New England Patriots talk about the Miami Dolphins. So we'll talk about the AFC East next week. That'll be the next podcast that we're going to talk about. So stay tuned for that. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys later.